Hi, I'm David Eicholtz with David Richard Gallery here in New York City, and I'm with Isaac Aiden, and we're in this unbelievable studio. <laughs> it's actually not a studio, but it is a studio for right now. But it's an old uh, warehouse here in New York, and you managed to kind of, this is a bit of a coup to get this. So the, um, what we're standing in front of, and you're kind of looking through, you're seeing are these monumental paintings. And uh, this is part of the series that Isaac started a couple years ago, but in terms of the gallery exhibitions, I guess the first one, gosh, when was that? Not even eight, was it a year ago? Yeah, and then, um, and then uh, we did a second show of a much more expansive uh, range of those and also larger ones. And then this is a, a yet for an upcoming show, but these were in process and uh, we're trying to capture this and show people sort of how he's making them and sort of them in their, in their raw state. Um, as opposed to in the you know pristine gallery walls. So, what we want to cover is uh, sort of how these relate uh, to this whole trajectory of this work. Because this really wasn't kind of planned for you to kind of march down this path so much and so deeply. But I think it's quite good because it really uh, has anchored you as sort of your or your practice is sort of rooted in painting, which I think is kind of important because uh, historically you've always considered yourself a painter. You know, and so, um, and there's, you've already commented on a few things as we've walked through, so there's a lot to cover here, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so scale is clearly the thing, and I can't remember now, how big are these paintings? They're 12 by 9. 12 by 9. And I just learned that one of them, and if you can see in the camera, it's actually, there's a trio of them, and they actually... There's three paintings that can be uh, uh, put together as a triptych. This one, that one, and then, and then also this one here. This one. And so these are in your typical uh, format of um, red, blue, yellow sprayed and um, aerosolized. So these are done flat and aerosolized to, um, it's kind of a pixelation and we got into before, this really kind of covers a lot of things. I mean, you're sort of mixing and melding, um, you're, you're mixing on the surface, but not by mixing it mechanically. Yeah. It's really an aerosolization and how the, um, the pigment, droplets of pigment sort of fall and pixelate. And so the, when they're more saturated, it's because you have more of like the blue or the red or the yellow as opposed to this sort of melding between them, correct? Yeah, I mean, the light is a little bad here, you know, so uh, I apologize for that. Yeah, these fluorescent lights, this was an old uh, warehouse uh, yeah. done for something else, and uh, he has it for a very brief period of time because I think this building's going to be torn down. Yeah, they're going to tear this building yeah. down. So of course, what else would we do yeah. <laughs> in New York? <laughs> we build we'd a big make tower. another skyscraper. But, so, um, um, so anyway, so yeah, sorry about the light sort of clipping these off. But and this is also sideways, but um, if you look at it really close, maybe we'll zoom in on it a couple of times, um, is uh, it, it's throwing little tiny, almost like pixels. And, yes. and you can see it a lot, you know, when it's, it's a much bigger piece. And what happens is that um, as I was developing this method where I'd spray, that those particulates over a long distance, like I was spraying all the way across this, they wouldn't really stick to the canvas. There was no binding. So what I, I did was I paint into wet oil paint. Mm -hmm. So all these get coated with a layer of oil paint. I've been experimenting with different ways to do that, and the surfaces are and much better. And also different values of the gray, because it yeah, affects the exactly. way the, that underpainting affects the uh, sort of radius, uh, sorry, Radiance and luminosity of the, of the uh, surface pigment. And they're a type of, um, uh, you know, it's like a, a contemporary pointillism in a way, too, but right. on a very, you know, fine level. And um, so I'm mixing, when I'm spraying them, it's just like colored gas, essentially. I'm just seeing this mm -hmm. gas. And it's, it's a very um, zen like process when you start working this big because you're holding your arm, your fingers start hurting, <laughs> you, you know, the, it's, it's very, uh, the, the fumes no are really no toxic. What's that? No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. But you wear a, a respirator. Yeah, I wear a respirator mask, and then we, you know, we try to vent it and things like that. But um, it's still, um, it's very slow. It's a very slow process. It's really process. weird when you come in, you do not smell it. A bit. 
Well, it's been drying for. Uh, yeah, but I really don't smell oil paint. It's really kind of amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a lot of oil paint that went through there's this place. A lot, a lot of paint in here. But, uh, but yeah, surprisingly, you can't really smell it because I try to vent it out, mm. and I use these big giant fans, and then you know just try to leave. Um, oh yeah, gotcha. But um, you know the the making them, it, it's been a, it's it's a lot different process. But it, there, it's building very slow. So you know this is kind of a continuation of the other work. So there's a lot of muscle memory and kind of knowing what the pieces are going to be. But you know, each one, I kind of sometimes have an idea. But there was a few of these that I just, I just went with what was happening in the painting at that. But I think moment. the reason why you've been wanting to do them is, first of all, you've been doing these paintings for actually quite a while, about five or six years. Yeah. But you were doing them, um, like as a grouping here or there, and we're incorporating them into sometimes uh, exhibitions and things like that. But you were annotating them in different yeah. ways and. Um, like with architectural elements or things like that. So this has been something that has been kind of kicking around for you. But when we were going to do that show, and it was pre-COVID, when we'd planned it, and then when COVID hit, oh, that's what it was. And we just realized the way you wanted to do it was just going to be impossible to, to get this sculpture apart and all that. It, was, it just didn't make sense. But it was really going to be a painting kind of like this yeah. with, with big um, aluminum eagles on two sides. Right. Of it. But my point being is, is that we decided just focus on painting. And so that's what you did. Huh. And now I think you got really, well, I know you got really into them. And I, I think you did like 40 or something. And we presented like 13 or so in, or yeah. 14 in that almost, show. Almost over 60. Over 60, okay. Yeah. And um, and it was approximately a lot. Yeah. And, uh, the, uh, and then you kind of kept going and because there were some colorways it seemed like you wanted to, to push the edge a little bit more but also you really wanted to play with some fluorescent paint which I think those were really spectacular I really liked those yeah. as well because it was really different and they were just a lot more rock'em sock'em you know and just really vibrant but also it, it, they kind of for me they felt very sort of trippy psychedelic and um, and also tilted to, to, in some ways a very color fieldish but more kind of psychedelic which I really kind of like but now you're really pushing um, the scale for sure. Um, but also you've uh, sort of changed the process just a little bit. And um, same concept, but because of the scale, things look a little bit different. But what I'm curious about in this triptych, because I'm trying to kind of eye them all here, I do see sort of a trend. So were these painted like three of them in a row and uh, all at the same time? Yeah, or did you do them sequentially? Actually, you can see kind of over here, um, if we come over this way, yeah, if he goes over there, you can kind of see them together. If we yeah, because what it is, is that one seems more saturated. This is sort of in between, and this seems saturated, but less. One of these it seems like it's like the blue is a little bit less, the banding. Is that about So what right? I was doing was I laid them down this long kind of like, almost this like runway and I'd paint them all at the same time. So oh, you did, okay. I did them at the same time, but it's, you're walking a long yeah. way, and you're trying to kind of... Were they butted up to each other, or was there a There's gap? space between them about the, the size of this, because okay. you need to get through them to pick them up. Gotcha. So I just went ahead and just kept painting over the floor, regardless of there wasn't a canvas, to try to keep it consistent. But there's a little, you know, it's it, a little modulation. It's not completely mechanical. And is the expectation to install them touching each other or with a gap? Um, I would probably put them and see how they look, like touching each other. I haven't put them together because they're Because the other dip that you did, the big one, um, yeah. which I think was eight foot by five foot. Yeah. Um, we butted those up and that actually worked out very good, but you painted them together. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry, refresh my memory, size again on these? These are 12, 12. by nine. So 12 that by what? Nine. nine, so it'll be 12, 12 foot tall and so 27 foot like a, wide. Okay, like a Persian rug, okay. Um, interesting. And you did do another, well, there's actually, you started to tell me something before we started the video. And so maybe what we'll do is we'll walk this way to this one sure. that's, that's still flat. You said you just finished it. 
it's very ethereal. I thought it was just ground, and as I got closer, I realized I could see these really subtle yellow and red and uh, a little bit of blue dispersed. But talk about this one. So this one was kind of what I was thinking I would do the whole series initially, and it looks a lot lighter, and then I don't know how it's going to look in the video. Um, it's very hard to photograph, like, you know, through the kind of ideal ones. And uh, we had it in the corner up, and it just looks like nothing. You know, it just looks like a dark Well, we're going to uh, have Yao photograph him in the gallery, right? So yeah. it'll be, on the, it'll be um, better lighting and more uniform. And but, you know, what I was really kind of, you know, I look at a lot of art history. And for these paintings, I was looking at, you know, Rothko's chapel, and I was looking at the scale of those pieces and um, the proportion, and I really went back and forth with what scale I could do and trying to keep in the same proportion. These pieces are so big they don't actually go out the door, so the canvases have to be made to fold, mm -hmm. and then I had to figure out what, at what scale could I still fold the canvas, but it would fit through a normal right. you know, door. So there was a lot of like, tinkering with the numbers like that. And then I like this proportion. This, this is in the proportion of the other ones I did. So, but basically it was like, I wanted to do a very ah, dark one. That's a good one. point. So the, are these, these are proportional to the 60 by 40? Is that what uh, you're saying? Yeah, I think they're the same proportion. And too. then what about the, I guess the eight by five? I never thought about that. Are they sort of? The eight by five, yeah, they're, they're pretty much the same proportion. Okay. So that's kind of, you know, right. what I was doing. Then I was looking at never even thought Rothko's about that. Chapel had a couple different proportions, but I was, you know, you know, looking at that versus like, you know, squaring it up more or going, you know, kind of skinnier. Um, but basically with this one, it's like, it, 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 at this angle, because the light, it looks very light, you know, I think with the uh, exposure on the, the camera, but it's really, um, you know, pretty dark. If you look on the wall, you can see where it's sprayed, the two different kind of darks. Oh, yeah. And it's way darker than the other paintings. And then it's very light, it's all the colors. Like I, I finished them with yellow, it's like warming the whole thing, but it's, it's very light, very s delicate, you know. Um, but it's, it's really um, the kind of painting that you need to see in person and your eyes take a little while to adjust to it. And especially because of the scale, it's very, I think, rewarding to look at because then your eye kind of adjusts to the painting but then when you look away and look at something else, it doesn't just immediately come back to it and like, you know, focus on it. It still mm -hmm. takes a while to like, kind of um, realize the painting kind of again. And I'm, I'm glad that there's not kind of ornaments with this or another kind of figurative element because I feel like if you saw that, then you'd be like, okay, I saw the painting. Whereas this takes a while to um, kind of experience. And what I'm kind of trying to get at too is the more of the uh, the phenomenological kind of relationship with the body and with the sublime and like you know even a painting like this big is one thing but then when you have you know three of them together or something like that it's a totally uh, different relationship with a volume of color mm -hmm. or with the subtle transition because that's what's really you know great is that over that scale the the transition is a lot different than over five foot you know yeah um well, they, these for sure become more cloud-like. You know, um, they, uh, what am I trying to say? So, it, you already touched on it. So, there, there's really nothing, there's not like a, like a, a burst of something that could sort of be evocative of like a sunrise or, you know, or, you know, kind of a, a, a landscape sort of feeling, like envisioning a, a, a horizon line or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, that, is that you, what you were getting at? There's nothing that goes like, that your mind well, just I, immediately I goes like, oh, that looks like a sunset, or oh, that looks like a, a I think landscape. I meant like, w originally I was gonna put like those eagles on the side of them, oh. or I had like a figurative kind of element or something. Oh yeah, well that was years ago. You on know? these, I didn't think you, you yeah. were entertaining that. No, no, but I'm yeah. saying that's what's, um, yeah. Once I started realizing no, I think this that one, scale. actually, the more I'm looking at it, um, there's even with this uh, kind of funky lighting, um, there's a lot of stuff that keeps kind of coming out of this painting. So it's really interesting how your eyes um, kind of keep seeing things in a different way. And also, the blue 
becomes less sort of gray blue and silver and almost becomes sort of a, a bright blue. Um, it's kind of interesting and it's been changing as I've been looking at it. What I'm trying to figure out is, you know, the, Bob Swain's, we have his huge monumental paintings up right now and I've been working on those quite a bit the last couple of months. But there, you know, they're, they're grids, one, one foot by one foot squares that make a grid. And what's happening there is when you look at, you know, these adjacent pigments, what happens is your eye starts wanting to blend them. Mm -hmm. What I'm wondering is, does that happen to some level here? So it'd be interesting to get these in the gallery and look at different ones and see if what I'm seeing is, is real or is there something phenomenological because it's just kind of hard to figure out right here. These, when I pan, they're a lot more gestural, but because your work, it's, you know, a lot of time you think of a gestural painting, you think of like a real contrasty kind of like stroke between, but I'm mm -hmm. doing that with a very gaseous kind of level yeah. of paint. So yeah. there's like, but it's also extremely subtle. So as you look at it for a while and your eyes adjust to it, there are sections that are more blue, yeah, they're like more yellow, and the yellow patches, you know. And but at first glance, it almost looks like a monochrome, you know. And um, so that that that's one of the things I really like about. But I think this, this is sort of pushing closer to the sublime because it's sort of indescribable and yeah. sort of, um, but yet evocative of like a sky or you know, like when you look over like a canyon, a huge yeah. vast canyon and the mist, you know, like in the morning or something and yeah. then as the light's coming up, you know, it creates this really disorienting, diffused mm -hmm. light and color sort of experience. And, um, and these seem to touch on that. There's yeah. another one, is, is it, a, that, well this one's kind of different. Where's that other one? Is There's it this these one? two so over go here. Go down this aisle here, yeah. And we'll take a look at this other one because now that I've seen, oh, there's two here side by yeah. side, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. These are different. Um, it takes a while to kind of adjust your eye to yeah. them. Yeah. It's also hard. So this hard. one feels more blue and yellow. Yeah. This is hard too because this shadow from the, uh, you know, these lights. Yeah. Yeah, but even still, I mean, you get because the scale of them, you're you're getting. 50% of it you're seeing, you know, quite genuinely. Um, and I know I shouldn't be looking at it this way, but. No, it's okay because um, you can, you, when you look at it close, it's really surprising how much of the, um, the kind of pixelization. Of yeah, that's what I'm noticing is this is surprising. feels very um, textured. Yeah. So it really did pick up some uh, tooth to it with the way you applied the paint this time. And then this one over here is more red blue. Yeah. There is yellow in this one. You can see quite a bit of yellow yeah. up underneath, but then you must have finished off with the red and then the blue. Um, this one, I usually finish most of them with the yellow, but this is probably even upside down, I would say. Like, oh, I see it's you know, yellow up there. Um, okay. And usually I have like the blue more on the top, but it's just the way that we're kind of like moving them around. It's just, they're wet. So you're moving these and they're freaking wet. Yeah. It's very scary because you don't want to, you can't touch it. So um, were these conceived of to be vertical or horizontal? I did. Not these particularly, but in general. What in general, I was thinking about doing them vertical and okay. then I did four of them horizontal um, just to try to be a bit more practical about how many places I could actually put them, you know, like. Because I don't see an orientation in these. Yeah. These don't feel oriented to me like the 40, the 60 by 40 inch ones, yeah. where there felt like an appropriate orientation because yeah. there was more banding, but yeah. also you were purposely banding those as I recall. Yeah. And you were thinking about that, you know, in terms of they were vertical format, but the bands were horizontal. Yeah. So, um, and again, it was sort of, those were reading like landscape which was odd because we typically think of a landscape as horizontal, they were yeah. vertical, but there was something about them that was evocative of sunrises and sunsets. Yeah. So you immediately sort of thought of them horizontally. Yeah. These, Whereas these seem more all over to me, um, except for the, the triptych. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know how it would look vertical, maybe, maybe it, would, it would work, but I, I did them kind of thinking about doing them horizontal just because um, you know, the, the ceiling's really high in here, but even if you hang a piece, you know, a, a nine foot tall piece 
horizontally, like a little bit off the ground, it's still going to be very large yes. in terms of the height. But not a lot of people have, can, or not a lot of spaces can handle 12 foot of vertical height and then you know, have to hang it off the, the floor so a little bit. So you anticipated these to be horizontal, yeah. these two. Yeah, yeah. What about the one on the floor? Yeah, this also horizontal. Or, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, because we were looking and at then, it vertically, or at least I was. Yeah. Okay. And then this pink one also. So we'll go around this aisle. Poor Yao, he's getting a workout tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough in the gallery in there, but now this is like crazy. But yeah, this one's really, I like this one, of course. It's very hot and very energetic, lots of energy. So this is like looking into the sun. Yeah, this sort one, of the super saturated. Um, so I think I did these really light ones first. And it's really hard to do um, the ones that we just looked at, a very delicate one, because there's so much that goes into this. And, um, and then you kind of just got to let it all go. And it's very hard to um, do a very delicate, very low contrast, sensitive piece. And then I kind of like, con you know, I kind of shift that with doing something that's super saturated. I just put a lot of pigment into it. Um, I knew I kind of wanted to do one kind of like this. I'm really happy with how it came out. You know, again, it's like a little hard with light, but then there's some weird, nice, subtle. It's not as, a lot of the paintings I did were just more just bands, very, almost very tonal, like I was just like a noise, and then it was very even. This has a lot more kind of gestural, subtle uh, things happening. Mm -hmm. that are a lot easier to achieve in a much bigger canvas. So there's definitely something different happening for me when I'm working on them. Well, this definitely has some like edge effects yeah. going on, which is sort of interesting because, uh, I mean, with the, cause it's just with this uh, blue color, but it's actually kind of like a lavender, isn't it? And that was some of the color mixing that was going on. Yeah, because what well, I'll do is I'm, I'm covering the entire canvas with yellow, blue, and red, and just, just in varying degrees. You know. in the prior, and, and the saturation is controlled largely by uh, distance from the campus, correct? Um, a little distance, but a lot of it is time, time. because so they're time so distance, big. Okay. So it's, it's time, but for most of them, because the scale, the distance is not as much. It's really about the time. So if you saw, it's like, um, it's a lot of time. You're just spraying and going through cans and cans and cans and cans of spray paint. Um. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even see the graveyard of cans. <laughs> no, I already like, thrown away. They're already gone. <laughs> but you know what? What's strange is it, the color that I probably used the most is red. You'd be really surprised, but the red really. Um, the, the yeah, which is interesting because it, it doesn't seem to be, except in the triptych, and that's the predominant color. But it's just. But that's the, more. the thing is these are very much layered yeah. and. Uh, um, but, but that is stunning. I actually think that's probably one of the most interesting ones in terms of the, the way you got the, the, the modeling and variation of the three colors, you know, and you actually got a lot of really interesting sort of effects, but it, effects, but it really approaches, I think what you were sort of um, trying to do even a couple of years ago when you're in that studio uh, next to the gallery um, and you were using the air to kind of whip it around out there on that terrace, you were letting the wind, gusts of wind kind of carry it and kind of create some different uh, motifs, but you were trying to go for uh, real subtle, mm -hmm. you know, that, there was a whole series and I think then when you extended that, that work and did another, how many were in that second batch? It was like another 40, 50? I did 56 that year, so okay. about one per year, but so, it was probably about uh, 30 really and then about another 30. did extend those really very, um, sort of still, almost monochrome yeah. pieces, but they're not monochrome. They've yeah. got all three colors operating in them, but you, uh, they were less saturated yeah. and kind of had more uniformity about the application. So they were, um, it was really subtle, almost like glazes, mm -hmm. you know, thin washes over yeah. the entire thing, but done with uh, aerosolized paint. So um, they were quite dramatic. Well, well they were dramatic when you think about it, yeah. but the, your walk up and look at it effect was very not subtle. dramatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was uh, to be very demure and very, um, very subtle. So, and how many more are you gonna produce? Cause there's, uh, how many do we got? Three, six, nine, 11. 
uh, there's eight. There's eight here, and then um, oh I've yeah, got, okay, two, four, six. Now I've got yeah, two eight, more, okay. but that's probably you know that's probably all I'll do in this studio. Yeah. No, they're nice. They're really nice. So we'll probably be doing a show or something then in, um, we might be doing something when we bring them to the studio, I mean to the gallery to photograph in a few months, right? Or whenever that is, or a few we'll weeks. Probably, you know, we'll see what the timing is, but maybe in August. And then we might something. do some, a, a full presentation of them or a subset of them or whatever. We'll see if we, how many will fit in that first floor. but. That'll be then sometime in 22, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, well, um, what other thoughts do you want to kind of say about these and capture? Anything in particular? Well, one thing I would say he, he's not doing, but you should subscribe to their See, YouTube channel. I was trying channel. to give a wind up so I could do that, but go on, you do it. You do it. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to their channel so they can keep, keep bringing you. And he's talking about the content. YouTube channel. Yeah. So, yeah. I just looked today because I had to do a summary for an estate. Um, to look at sort of uh, some hits of just different things. And um, it said we had 92 um, on our YouTube channel. I saw it was like 180 subscribers, but you're getting like, you know. No, I meant 92 videos. Oh, we've, videos? We've done, yeah, yeah, you've done a lot of videos. 92 or something. And you're getting a lot of Yeah, I think this seems like 500 to him, but. But they're not, <laughs> but, but people aren't subscribing. So subscribe to the channel. That's a way to help it and to help promote it to other people. If you want to support artists without necessarily buying their work, that's a good way that you can do it so people can learn about different artists' work and continue bringing this type of content to people. Yeah, because people really have liked the uh, videos tremendously. Um, we, we get lots of compliments from people who aren't even our artists or, you know, um, people that don't even really know. We get all sorts of comments and compliments because what they like is it's, it's a sort of inside look. And it's not overly rehearsed, but yet it's very professional. I mean, we've, you know, everybody's been really great about doing the videos. We do them sometimes in the studio, sometimes we do them uh, at the gallery when the show is actually finally installed, especially for out-of-town artists uh, when they fly in and to, to do the exhibitions. But it's a great way for people to, to see the artists, hear them talk about the work, um, and get sort of, you know, our reactions and sort of a dialogue. And sometimes. Artists are sort of stumped. They, they, you know, something really interesting and new comes up. I mean, it's uh, in the discussion, and so it's quite good. And I've been very pleased with them. I mean, for me, one of the things that's unique about this video is to try to show the studio a little bit. Yeah. I mean, um, you get a sense of scale or just, just how it would happen or the environment is going to be a lot different than, than when you see it in the gallery yeah. or you see the, you know, um, we're not showing everything, but, you know, there a lot goes into the process of making a piece, even this simple. And that's actually probably the biggest challenge for me in this as an artist, like psychologically, is like just to stretch one of these pieces is, is really yeah. a lot. Yeah. And then, you know, to try to get everything perfect and do it, and then to put that all aside and just kind of let the painting lead you to the place where it's gonna be, or to do something that's very subtle, mm -hmm. um, it's it it's difficult. It's very challenging, you know. I think yeah, that's the other thing too, though. Is and this is an unusual studio setting because you happen to you know, you're, you do have a studio space on the other side of the building, but this is a space that they had just cleared out. It actually was a factory. Oh no, it wasn't and cleared. It was full of crap. Oh, okay. Like all this well, stuff over here. Yeah. But, but okay, the, they took the people out. They left the crap. Okay, yeah. so I got it. Um, but and this building is in an area uh, here in Long Island City that's just—it's uh, all new. It just—it's incredible. It's uh, this how, is going to be an 80-floor tower. Yeah, yeah it's just unbelievable. This warehouse. But you know, so this isn't normal. But what's interesting though, this still though a lot of studio spaces you know are, are raw spaces, but to have something really pristine come out of them. So the juxtaposition of how something so pristine is created in the environment of something that's so raw, you know, just concrete and, yeah. you know, um, and just dinge, you know, 100 years of dinge in a factory is just sort of interesting. And I think it, it just sort of blows people's minds, which is, I think, the benefit of the videos when we are able to do things in an artist studio. But we're fortunate, you live here, and a lot of our artists live here, but, um, you know, but it's hard to do it with, you know, artists who live out of town. 
and so that's why we rely on when they come in to to do the presentations but uh, but do subscribe it's like you said these all get posted on YouTube and they're all posted on the, the gallery but uh, websites but if you go out to YouTube um, and subscribe as he says then you'll get updates because we do two to three a month and um, so we've really been doing more and more over the last year and a half or two and not anything to do with COVID we'd started doing these videos and these in-depth discussions with artists a while ago because I just felt like they were um, better than transcribing an interview and doing it as something written uh, it just seemed more authentic and genuine to actually see the artist describing and, and, and thinking about the work and, and presenting it and um, but I, I like to do them spontaneously I don't like to give people too much time to think about it I'd like to get sort of a you know quick yeah. reaction but the subscriptions are a good idea and uh, and that way I guess you'll get they'll get notices from YouTube right you can and, turn on the notification bell <laughs> <laughs> but like I said we do two to three a month but it, so. it, it helps with the algorithm by people subscribing yeah. and then there's other similar channels maybe that you're getting content from and then those same users will help spread it to other users. Got it. Okay. All right. So it's the sort of networking like with all the social media. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, great. This has been great and um, I'm sure we'll probably do another one in between now and the show or something because you're always doing stuff. So. Uh, Anyway, we appreciate it and uh, stay tuned for the, when we'll actually be presenting these in the gallery. Thanks. Thanks a lot.